Hi everybody, Russ on the West End Network, hope you're all safe and well. We're not talking about modern day rumours today, we're talking about retro ones. <laughs> So, obviously, we've just opened the transfer window. The transfer, we haven't just been, I haven't personally opened it, but the transfer window has been open for about a day. We've been, we've already been linked with about 80 players. And it got me thinking about so many players we've been linked with who, and we've done it before, we've gone through like the, the class of 2021 rumours and it didn't really work out well with some of those players that uh, we were linked with, in all honesty. But I thought with, you know, some of the, players from yesteryear that we've been linked with maybe at an early stage in their career they've gone on to have you know well be world players of the year and stuff like that there's loads of them of us the shoulda woulda couldas so that's what we're doing here we've got about 10 or so today and i'm sure in the comments if you've got anyone that you think oh i forgot about what about him russ what about him what about him we're going to do a, a second episode maybe a third episode maybe a little mini series just to keep us going just to break up the monotony of all the transfer rumours we're having at the moment. So, and we're not just sticking with rumours to do with you know, plays in the last sort of a few years. We're going way back. We're going way back. And we're starting with um, this gentleman. Starting with this gentleman, Gordon Banks. That's how far we're going. Not how far we're going back. That's how we're going back with Gordon Banks. Now, obviously, World Cup winner. We know. Um, part of that 1966 side. Um, and for many of us, um, including myself, to be honest, um, may not have known that actually he was very close to becoming a hammer under Ron Greenwood. Um, the story goes that um, no, it's not Ariola. The story goes. The story goes that Bobby Moore um, basically was urging Ron to sign um, Gordon from Leicester, and it's not like early on in his career. This was nineteen. Um, 1969, 67 rather, England had just won the World Cup. We had the World Cup um, captain, we had uh, a World Cup winning midfielder, forward, obviously they scored all the goals in the final. And in the background, we could have had four. We could have had four. We could have had Gordon Banks in the team as well. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. As Ron had given his word to Kilmarnock at the time that um, we would sign their goalkeeper, Bobby Ferguson. So we did not sign Gordon Banks. We signed Bobby Ferguson. And apparently the decision uh, didn't go down too well with Mr. Moore at the time. And Bobby went on to play for West Ham for many years into the early 80s, I believe, if I remember correctly. Sticking with goalkeepers. What about Petr Cech? Now, when he moved to when he was moving to Chelsea, there was lots of interviews and obviously little profiles around his career, um, and an interview with former West Ham number one and um, Czechoslovakia compatriot um, Ludic Maklosko revealed life could have been very different for uh, for Mr. Czech. Um, the story goes that basically they were West Ham were interested in in signing uh, Petter when he was nineteen. Um, but it was decided it would be a mistake and he wasn't ready for English football and um, needed to continue his development back in the Czech Republic. Um, uh, Czech would then go on to sign for Ren um, just after his 20th birthday. It's always Ren, isn't it? We always get, I mean, with, um, you know, Aguard and, and lots of other players, Ren sort of drops out, you know, does come into that sort of uh, our zeitgeist quite a lot, really. Um, but he signed for Ren for two years before completing a move to Stamford Bridge and then obviously on to uh, Arsenal afterwards in the latter bits of his career. West Ham did decide to sign goalkeeper cover, though. We thought, you know, it's a good point. We'll get, maybe not spend the money or, and get this 19-year-old lad in. We need some experience. We will sign someone who's twice his age. Um, we signed, instead of better check, we signed Raymond van der Howe from Man United. And that was in the summer of 2002. The Man United reserve team goalkeeper, you're in. Not better check and end up becoming one of the world's best goalkeepers. You, my friend, you're in i don't think he, had, he might have made one appearance for the club if actually i don't think he made one appearance i'm sure you'll tell me in the comments below if he did or he didn't sticking with chelsea let's go to the forward line didier drogba 
phenomenal player, had a fantastic career in the Premier League, scored goals, um, was a ferocious player, um, always seemed to score w- w- and always play well against us. But he revealed when he was playing for Galatasaray after uh, his time at Chelsea, he could have ended up being a West Ham player before he moved from uh, Marseille um, to Chelsea. It was actually before he moved to Marseille, in fact. Um, his previous club, uh, um, Gin, Ginkamp, Ginkamp, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, but anyway, he we were looking at him when he was at Ginkamp. Um, but West Ham decided we were fine. We didn't really need... We didn't need DDA Jogba. It seems a, a crazy thing to say when you're talking at the time. We've got Paolo Di Canio. We've got... Freddie Canute, we'll buy a youth team player, we're going to buy a Frenchman, we're going to buy Youssef Sofian instead. So that was the plan. Didn't really work out that way. Freddie Canute was then injured for most of that season, the second half of the season for sure. Um, Di Canio, he uh, he fell out with, with the late Glenn Roder. Sofian wasn't ready to be uh, was not ready for the step up into the first team. So uh, the 2003-2002-2003 season, which was the first to have sort of specific transfer windows, meant that uh, obviously we couldn't sign anyone um, at that time. So we had to spend most of the season, second half of the season, with Ian Pearce up front. Loved Ian. He was in my hammers, hammer, uh, my hammers eleven, um, but not up front as a centre back. And uh, sign on a short term deal. Les Ferdinand. He was still. 36 at the time unsurprisingly we were relegated that season next up Neymar lots of speculation about what he's going to be doing this summer um, obviously Mbappe signing a squillion, a squillion pounds a week deal uh, with PSG means that maybe Neymar might have to move on just to uh, even just to settle the books but back in 2010 West Ham had secured their Premier League survival for another year we'd hired Avram Grant as our uh, as our manager and the club were reportedly ready to break their transfer record for Neymar. The Brazilian was 18 at the time um, and had already re- impressed um, for his current club Santos and was just weeks away from his his first senior international call up. Um, we apparently offered, as I said, seven about 17, 18 million pounds, which was a club record fee at the time for uh, for Neymar, which we eventually priced out of a move and instead opted rather than Neymar, rather than a future, you know, top tier Ballon d'Or nominee player. Nope, we're not going to have Neymar. We're going to get Victor Abina instead. Now, obviously, Victor had his had his moments. He, the Nigerian striker, had his moments at West Ham but not enough to keep us um, from finishing at the bottom of the league. Another striker, Ruud van Nistelrooy. Now, a few months before the Neymar bid, West Ham, uh, West Ham owners um, attempted to make a statement signing in, their, in the first January transfer window. Um, van Nistelrooy was made available by um, Real Madrid after they'd signed a couple of people, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, and also they'd also at the same time signed uh, Karim Benzema. So uh, the previous summer, so they didn't really need the Dutchman anymore. And West Ham were ready to scoop uh, for a thousand, a hundred thousand pound a week contract for the Dutchman. Instead, he decided to um, opt for the Bundesliga with Hamburg. And West Ham's response was rather than bringing one striker for a hundred grand, let's bring in three strikers for sl- for even less than that, probably about a, a half of that. We brought in Ilian, Benny McCarthy, and Midu. Seems a fair swap, three for one. Now, <laughs> Van Nistelrooy, he in his first eleven games of the Bundesliga uh, for Hamburg, five goals in eleven games. These three. Less than five goals between the three of them um, so, over the same period. So it uh, wasn't a great move. You know, definitely was uh, quantity over quality there. Another striker, Alvaro Negredo. Now, back in the summer of 2003, uh, when it looked as though West Ham had no chance of signing, uh, of making Andy Carroll's loan from Liverpool permanently. We had him on loan the season before. Another transfer target emerged and... Um, we had apparently bid it for bid 14 and a half million quid for uh, Negredo. 
um, just 12 months after the Seville strike, had played in the Euro 2020 um, triumph in terms of his native Spain. Um, but by the time the Hammers realised Carroll was, was available, um, it didn't seem to matter that the Spaniard wouldn't cost a lot more, um, to be honest. Did it work out well? Well, as I said, we, we, we stumped for Andy Carroll instead um, on a permanent signing. Negredo would go on to his for his one season, one and only season season in Man City, score twenty three goals, um, including a hat trick against us in the League Cup semi finals, um, <laughs> and ended up the competition with uh, with two trophies. Um, Andy Carroll scored twenty three goals over the same course, uh, actually over the course of four years. So where uh, Negredo was twenty three goals in one season and two trophies, AC. 23 goals in four years. Edison Cavani. Now, back in 2009, the Daily Telegraph reported at the time that the Uruguayan was regarded as a replacement for um, Craig Bellamy, who moved to Man City along with uh, Nigel de Jong under uh, Mark, um, Mark, Hugh, Mark Hughes's stewardship. Uh, Cavani was 22 at the time, had a breakthrough season with Palmeiro and reportedly was on the verge of exiting um, the season before, 12 months earlier. West Ham had renewed, he scored 15 goals that season. Palmeiro opted to hold on to the strike. Eventually they, they held out and sold him to Napoli at the end of that season. West Ham couldn't wait. We couldn't wait. We needed a striker in. So rather than wait for uh, Cavani and sign him in the summer, we ended up getting Alessandro Diamanti and uh, Luis Jimenez. Neither reached double figures for the club, to be honest. And, and you know, by all accounts, uh, Diamanti, you know, by his own admission, left far too soon at West Ham. But they weren't Cavani, were they? Midfielders now. Let's go to N'Golo Kante. Um, this is an interesting tale. Um, so, obviously, 2015-16 season, West Ham, one of the best seasons in the Premier League under Slaven Bilic. But it could have been even better uh, if Kante had joined um, from uh, League On instead of eventually moving to the League... Oh, no. You see, you see, we got instead um, the the uh, in moving to Leicester City instead. Um, indeed, um, the club decided they were pretty much all set for defensive midfielder. So rather than go for Kante, they went um, for no one actually, and eventually brought in they, when they had to bring in someone. They brought in Alex Sung from Barcelona um, on a on a loan initially. Um, we never really got to see as much with. Alex, we'd want to. Again, injuries and stuff like that. He made eight league starts after extending his loan from Barcelona. Kante did all right. He did okay. He didn't mind too much. Not, you know, not necessarily playing for West Ham. He ended up winning the Premier League with Leicester, moving to Chelsea, winning bloody everything as well. So they didn't do too shabby, did they? Pep Guardiola. Now, when when Guardiola left Barcelona back in 2001, uh, West Ham were one of a number of clubs who were looking after, looking at him. Um, the reason why we didn't go for Pep Guardiola, it was, well, basically the presence of a young talent by the name of Michael Carrick. Um, Glenn Roder didn't want to hamper his development into the first team by signing Guardiola and instead um, rather than getting Guardiola on a free he went to bring in the more attack minded Don Hutchinson, deadly Don and persist with Carrick at the base of their midfield next up Riquelme, Juan Roman Riquelme, back in the summer 2010. Yes, the same summer that we bid for Neymar and the same summer we bid for, um, I don't know, we were initial we did in the January, but the same 2010. Um, we uh, were one of, club, one of the several Premier League clubs um, looking to express an interest to sign the out-of-contract Riquelme. Indeed, um, we were apparently seen as the, the, the most, the best option for Riquelme, to be honest. Um, he eventually decided to sign a new deal with Boca Juniors and West Ham had to go back to the drawing board. And the drawing board ended up coming up with Thomas Hitzelsberger. So we didn't get Rick Elmay, we got Thomas Hitzelsberger, picked up an injury in international duty, had to wait until uh, February to make his debut and was unable to save the team from relegation. So, yes, so all in all, not a great bunch. <laughs> 
Jones. We got, eventually, we're going to put an 11 together. The team we could have had. Petr Cech in goal or Gordon Banks in goal. Up front, you've got we've got Rude, you know, Drogba and Van Nistelrooy. And we've got loads more we're going to talk about. The likes of Batis Juta, likes of Shevchenko, Salas, Eto, Anyone else you can think of, let us know in the comments below. We'll put me into the next episode. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know. Give us a like, give it a comment, give it a share, all that good type of stuff. Maybe become a channel member as well. Always thank, always thankful for our channel members. Let me know what you think about the, about it as well as an idea. If you liked it, if you hated it, let me know. Um, we, we try and tweak everything based on your feedback. So let us know. Um, and anyway, I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Enjoy 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 the transfer window being open take care one stay safe wash those hands stay lucky stay cheeky stay positive keep the faith my friends keep the faith and we'll see you guys very very soon take care much love ciao ciao for now It's like a family tree, part of you and me.